ML Toys here today to talk to you about modifying your ride-on car from start to finish. This video is specifically for the people that have purchased cars not made by Power Wheels or Peg Perego. Uh, there's a ton of what we call off-brand import cars being bought into the country today that they look really cool on the internet. Um, and, and then when you get them, well, sometimes they underperform in speed and in durability. Uh, and uh, people get frustrated really quick, or even if they perform, you know, to their standard, you still want to add more power. This is going to be a long video. We're going to go over everything there is to know about modifying your car. Take your time watching this. I can't stress enough, if you don't listen to the content, then you're going to have frustrations and wasted money uh, doing things, buying cheap things on the internet and expecting better results than what you paid for. Uh, what we do here is all about performance parts, uh, and we want you to have a, a happy experience with your kid going fast. So there's three main components to any ride-on car. The batteries that are in it, the speed controller that it's in it, and the motor gearboxes that, that are in it. The rest of the stuff is fluff. The gas pedals, the radio in it, suspension system, that's all secondary. You have to have this core stuff working right on your car. So we want to go over some of these things. I'm going to start in the middle with the speed controller, the electronics in the car. Now, what we're talking about, a lot of cars nowadays are coming with these electronic modules. Uh, they're, they're very cheaply made. I mean, look, if you're getting a circuit board in something and it only costs you $150 for the entire car, you know that there's not going to be a lot of quality to them. A lot of them are remote control also. I want to stress right now, we do not recommend modifying a car, adding speed to a car while it's remote control. If you've had a remote control car when you were a kid or even now and you tried driving it, you're going to hit stuff. Well, what do you think it's going to be like when your kid is in it? It's no different. It's a bigger vehicle. So we really don't recommend doing modifications and using the remote control with your car. So anytime you start modifying, one of the big problems is these SOC speed controllers blow up. They really don't handle any more voltage well. And when you go to bigger or faster motors, there's more amperage draw through the system. The two of those things don't bode well for these speed controllers. We've developed our Titan speed controller, this module here, that plugs in directly with 90% of the ride-on cars out there. Uh, on our website on the Titan speed control product page, You'll see samples of all the speed controllers that we know of that this module will replace without you having to cut any wires. Um, there's some uh, units that if you have remote control steering, the plug is different on, uh, on some of them. But again, we recommend just abandoning that remote control altogether. So this Titan unit will handle 12, 18, or 24 volt batteries, 550 motors, 775 motors, stock or performance grade, we made this thing strong enough to handle all of those demands. So this is a, a must-have. Everything else, electronics, will still work in your car, the sound and all that. Um, it's a great plug-in, easy replacement when you're getting into modifying. Now let's talk about the batteries. There's a couple things with batteries. There's voltage and amperage to your batteries. The voltage of the battery dictates the speed that you're going to get out of the batteries. The amperage of the battery dictates the runtime that you're going to get. Amperage is basically your fuel tank in your battery. If you look at your car now, you, most cars are either made as 12 volt or 24 volt. The 12 volt cars, the batteries are a lot smaller. They take up less space. They're less money. Um, this is an example of a 12 volt, 12 amp battery that we sell. Uh, most cars come with like a 7 amp battery, so all of our batteries are going to give you more runtime. This is an 18 volt battery. This is a 24 volt battery. Now these are what we call SLA batteries, sealed lead acid. They won't leak if you break them. Um, the sealed lead acid batteries work in almost all of the cars out there. Uh, plug in, very easy to use. You get the most run time you can with the sealed lead acid. Your kid can plug it into the charger and you're not going to blow anything up. It's still the best way to run a ride-on car today. Now, one of the popular trends on the internet is to run lithium batteries in the cars. Um, the most popular is the lithium power tool batteries. Now, this is a typical 20 volt DeWalt battery. And if I look on here, this one's going to say 1.5 amp. 
So this is our 18 volt, 12 amp, so 12 gallons of gas. Here's your typical power tool battery, 1.5 gallons of gas. Some of them have four gallons, seven, eight gallons. So right off the bat, you're gonna get less runtime with one of these batteries, but also a lithium battery has a lot of punch to it. No matter what style of lithium, they're gonna have more oomph like that when you first hit the gas than what an SLA battery has. What that does is it puts a surge up the system that can blow your speed controller or it can blow your motors or gearboxes. So if you're going to run a power tool battery, and we don't fault anybody that does because a lot of guys have a dozen of these batteries laying around, you need to run our lithium module with that. What the lithium module does is two important features. It has a soft start to it that create, stops that punch from surging through your system. Even if you have a speed controller that has a soft start in it, that's soft starting the voltage. This unit is going to create, uh, stop that amperage uh, from creating that punch into the car. So this can be added on in conjunction with our speed controller. Uh, it should work with all of the stock speed controllers, but we can't guarantee it because we didn't make those. But it does work with our Titan speed controller. Um, the other thing that the lithium module does uh, is it prevents the battery from over discharging. Uh, lithium batteries, if you run them down too low, they won't take a charge again. And in some cases, they can ca catch fire. One of the uh, reasons that people have fires with, with lithium batteries. So this has a low voltage protection in it. Some batteries have the low voltage protection built into them. Sometimes it's your power tool that has the low voltage protection in it. So don't take any chances. Put this module on. It's okay if your tool also has this, the low voltage. You can't have too many low voltage cutoffs on it. So a must have if you're going to go to the lithium battery route. All right, so that's the battery packs, the speed controller. And you'll find if you just increase the voltage on your car and you put the speed controller in and you have these style gearboxes in your car, which a lot of these imports are coming with, they're really cheaply built. Um, they, they don't handle a lot of power in them. They also don't sell replacement parts for these gearboxes. So if you break one gear, you wind up buying a whole new one. Sometimes it's a real struggle to find part support for these off-brand cars also. So you wind up going on the internet and you may not get the exact same one, but there are no, let me stress this again, there are no high performance gearboxes out there to replace these today. Nobody makes that. They list them as higher performance. They list RPMs on motors that are really high numbers. RPMs do not tell the speed of a motor. It tells the speed of the motor when it's outside the car, not in your gearbox, not with the weight of a kid riding on it. Under load, that high RPM motor might actually go slower than a low RPM motor. In winter of 2026 we are coming out with these uh gearboxes which will come with a very high power 775 motor notice i don't say high rpm uh, we've got videos of these running in two-wheel drive cars four-wheel drive cars at all different voltages they handle the power uh, they will be direct plug and play to your car uh, one of the big differences that we've seen with these is the diameter of the inner hole the axle hole is different on these different brand cars. So what we did is simply went with the largest size hole and you're going to be able to get bushings to go in here to fit your size axle. So this will be a one size fits all for any of these teardrop kits. It's going to have the motor with it. You won't have to do any soldering to put the motor in. It's an easy swap out on your car. There could be little custom tuning fitting if your axle is longer or shorter. Um, easy things that you can do on your own. You know, there's so many hundreds of these cars out there that we can't just blanket say that, you know, you just sit this in and it's going to fit every single car. But we promise you it won't take much modifying, if any, to make these fit in the cars. Uh, one of the things we've seen is the cars that have the 550, the smaller diameter motors in them, uh, there's usually a ring that uh, the motor sits into. And all you have to do is cut that ring larger to fit this. We did that on our Huffy brand vehicles uh, and also on our Ryder brand vehicle. Uh, 
and they fit with no problem. Not not a big deal to do. Uh, much more power, much more speed. Uh, we've changed the gear ratio on the gearbox to give it more top speed than any other one of these teardrop style gearboxes. So even without the motor, you're going faster. And then these motors were custom designed specifically for this use. Again, we have videos showing the speed that you'll get out of these. We have steel gears in here. There's a little bit of uh, nylon uh, in the areas that don't need extra durability, but there's steel everywhere it needs it. There's ball bearings in the gearbox. Uh, it's, and we're gonna sell individual parts for the gearbox. So should you break something in one of them, you'll have the option to just replace that one part inexpensively get back running again because we want you guys to push these things hard, find the limits, have fun, do what you want to do with the cars. You shouldn't be limited by what's available on the market. So if we find that you guys are doing more with these than what we've tested them for, we'll keep making them stronger. We'll keep coming out with upgrades. That's what we do. I think that's everything that we have to cover on this. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. We'll do the best we can to help you. Once these uh, gearboxes are out there in thousands of cars, we'll have a lot more feedback and we'll start listing, hey, for this car, this is the exact setup that you need. Um, but that's going to take a little time to come around. So as of when we're recording this in the fall of 2025, this is the best way you have to modify your off-brand ride-on car.